What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Project Lazarus. This is a slick little $2 title. That's right, I said it, $2. Uh, that's barking up the Vampire Survivor's tree. However, this is a game that I actually, like, literally tweeted out this idea a couple months ago. I was like, how come there's not, like, a Mech Warrior Vampire Survivor's mashup? And... Project Lazarus is exactly that game. So it came out in the last week or so. I've spent about an hour and a half with the game, and I am pleased to report that it is pretty fun if you're into the core gameplay loop of Horde survival shooter roguelites. Uh, there's lots of stuff to upgrade here. There's lots of stuff to fiddle around with. There's always room for a little bit more, but I'll talk about that kind of near the end of the video where I'd like to see the game go with updates. But as of right now, it's a $2 game that's got some, it's got some definite economy inside of it. Like there's a lot of enjoyment to be had. The point of this game is that you are a mech dropping down into a sort of Starship Trooper style infested bug planet and you've got to annihilate uh, bugs with your mech for as long. I almost said blood. I don't even know what a blug is. A blug definitely sounds like something that you would use in like plumbing in order to make sure something doesn't backwash. But anyways, you drop down onto the planet, you wipe out bugs until you can wipe no longer. Once you die, you come back, you spend your credits on weapon upgrades. There is some divergence with this game in the way that upgrades work versus something like Vampire Survivors. And we'll talk about how that is a little bit later. But let's jump on in and play a game first. So inside of New Game, you will see that there are about six mechs that you can choose from. And I am pleased to say that they all do play kind of differently. Uh, the Lazarus is capable of 360 degree movement. Very, very arcadey. When he dies, he comes back to life with half health. Uh, we've got the Dozer over here. The Dozer controls like a tank, meaning W always moves you forward with respect to the treads. The Dozer is capable of crushing small enemies, and when it crushes small enemies, you actually get armor back. The Tombstone I haven't played yet, but it says right here that it recovers armor and it fixes itself so long as it hasn't taken damage for six seconds or more. So that's actually a pretty cool thing, and in fact, I'm going to try him out. He looks like a cool little chonk boy. I don't know what weapon he starts out with. I may not have upgraded the weapon that he starts out with, so I'm a little tiny bit worried about it because weapon upgrades in this game are actually really, really, really important to progression. Uh, they function differently than in a lot of other games. Uh, so in this game and in Vampire Survivors and in whatever Horde survival game you want to play, when you pick up the same weapon like twice, it upgrades. Oh, he starts with a flamethrower. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the flamethrower has a very, very, very long reload time, so we're going to want to be mindful of that. There's going to be considerable portions of this fight where we're not going to be able to deal damage. And so we're going to want to take things like movement speed in order to keep us away from the enemy, but our first level up has already dropped. We can choose between a chem tank. Uh, this basically is the same as holy water from Vampire Survivors. It creates no fly zones where the enemy cannot go without taking a bunch of damage. We've got the drone pod. It's going to drop a bunch of drones onto the surface that attack enemies. Uh, we've also got a missile launcher pod that will occasionally fire a missile at the enemy. I like the idea of drones, so let's try that out. We now have a drone pod, and as you can see, there's going to be a... Oh, he actually... Okay, so he can only fire with respect to his facing. That's the difference with him. So all of the other mechs have kind of a canopy that ro rotates about the top when you rotate the mouse. This guy does not. He can only walk and fire in straight lines. Okay. Okay. With the flamethrower, that makes this a little bit more complicated, but I think I can live with it. We've got a shotgun right here. I think I will take the shotgun because I've already upgraded the shotgun. So when we get this weapon, it's as though we picked it up four times because I've upgraded this in the metagame progression four times. And so instead of starting out with a level one shotgun, we start out with a level four shotgun, which is actually really, really, really powerful. Uh, it means he's going to fire like five times instead of firing once and our reload time is way better than it would be on like a default shotgun. So let's go ahead and see if we can get ourselves a couple of kills out here and fill up that big blue meter. Uh, one thing that I think is pretty cool about the game is I do like that all of the mechs sort of play a little bit differently with regards to control scheme. You can tell that that was a focus in development of this game is like, okay, so how do we make each of these mechs feel distinct in a game that is really about homogenizing builds and coming up with things that work and how can we kind of shift that around? They've done it via making every single mech control differently. Uh, so certain weapons are naturally going to shine on certain mechs a lot better just due to the fact that you are confined to certain grids of movement depending on what base tread your mech has. Uh, we can take a missile launcher, we can take a laser blaster, or we can take the cosmic guardian. The laser blaster is basically a bouncing laser that bousts in between enemies. I have upgraded this to level 4, so I'll probably take it. 
The other option is the Cosmic Guardian. Uh, basically, it puts plasma balls that rotate around your character, a la like the Bible in Vampire Survivors. Uh, we'll go with the Laser Blaster since that comes in at level 4. And it's got a pretty fast firing rate, and I think that's sort of like what we're lacking right now. All of our weapons have like a considerable, I, I guess like reload slash refractory period. Uh, where they aren't going to be of use to us and given the fact that we have to walk in straight lines in order to pilot this mech I feel like uptime is gonna be one of the most important things we can possibly stack up here We want weapons that are firing pretty much all the time because this mech is gonna be More or less about cutting a line through the enemy and continuing in that line we can upgrade Ooh, We can get movement speed right here. That might actually be helpful we can also take the laser blaster up to level 5, or we could take the flamethrower up to level 5. That will knock our reload speed or down to 10 seconds. Let's do the laser blaster first, since that fires consistently in a straight line like a machine gun. And I feel like that's going to be a little bit better for our strategy of keeping like a path going through the enemy. 1 minute 50 seconds on in. We haven't taken any damage. We haven't had any major problems. I am going to kind of try to head to the periphery of the combat area. That way I can gather up some of the goodies around here. One thing I would like to see improved with the mechs is that all of them look very stiff when they're walking around. I think that's one spot where graphically the game could be doing a little bit better. If you think about these walker mechs, effectively what they are is they're like a series of parts that have been placed upon suspension and they're all linked to one another. So every time he takes a step, he should kind of like move up a little bit with regards to the entire chassis, come down and there should be like a clunk where you can see the robot sort of sink in on his suspension. Uh, just to give it sort of like a loping gajug, 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 gajug. Like it wouldn't necessarily need the sound effect because I'm one of those people that I think that footstep noises in video games are super annoying and like hard to like ignore. Uh, just largely due to the fact that repetitive noises don't work for me. But you could still get that graphic in there to make the weight, the mechs look like they have weight. As of right now, I feel like they walk entirely too smoothly. Uh, let's go ahead and we will upgrade our drone pod to level 2. I don't know if that's going to give us a second drone. I can't really tell. It did give us a second drone. Okay, good. Uh, the drones don't really seem to deal that much damage. As of right now, they're doing about as much damage as a level 1 machine gun would. That's not great, but really the only reason that I'm leaning into the drones right now is because they keep the enemies off of our flanks. And since it takes our mech a second to actually turn around uh, with our current configuration and our current movement schema, keeping things off of our flanks so I've always got like a nice round area to rotate would be really, really nice. I am going to take the shotgun up to level 5. That sounds really, really good. The more that I can keep this thing busting, the better. If the beginning of the game seems kind of easy right now, that's because it is. I've got a number of weapon upgrades that guarantee the beginning of the game will be easy. But if you're walking in with a mech that's like unupgraded and has like no weapons that have had a couple points put on into them, this is actually fairly challenging right here depending on what starting weapon your mech has. You're going to be doing a lot more evasive maneuvers than I currently am. We've got a few more bugs coming in from that other side. Don't really care about the Cosmic Guardian. Since we've got rapid firing weapons, I'm going to go with an increase to crit chance. Crit chance always tends to go pretty well with weapons that fire very, very rapidly and allows you to get a little bit more bang for your buck. And that's sort of like a universal truth of video games. The faster firing the weapon, the more you kind of want to stack as much crit as you possibly can on it. Got a nice little corridor right there. I was kind of waiting for an opportunity to turn this thing around. She's a big, heavy girl. A laser blaster level 5. Don't mind if I do. I'll take that. Uh, one thing that I would like to see is that your weapons fire in a straight line out of the turret. Meaning that, like, your left gun and your right gun, they sort of fire with a corridor in the middle where if you don't have some kind of like fan of fire or flamethrower it can be really really difficult to like hit enemies inside that little like five foot gap in between your guns it would be nice if they had a slight arc that converged towards a point in front of them well i don't know if that's a good idea or not now that i think about it i don't know that would be one of those things that i would have to test out Anyways, we've got, let's see, we go Tesla Coil, that fires independently in all directions regardless, or we could go for more damage. 
Let's go for a damage module in the middle. 7% damage is not a ton when we're only dealing like 15 or 16 damage. But as we upgrade these guns, I think it'll probably be pretty nice. I suppose that that converging issue that I was talking about is more a problem introduced by this mech chassis in particular than something like the Lazarus or something like the tank, which both have kind of like a rotating cockpit on top that can fire in any direction along any line and can sort of adjust their firing vector by very, very thin margins, because this mech doesn't control with the mouse in any respect. I guess that's why it feels a lot more apparent, getting these shots lined up. I am a little bit worried about what that's going to mean as we get further into the game and the enemy hordes get very, very large and difficult to deal with, and precision of fire becomes more important. It may be more likely that we're supposed to be using this as kind of like a weapons platform from which to deploy things that can hit in every direction. And in fact, we can get Drone Pod 3 right here, and I do think that a third drone sounds really, really nice. One thing I do like about the game is that whenever you pick up a mod, it does add something to the mech. So, like, we've got, like, this little... We've got, like, I don't know, it's not a cylinder. We've got kind of, like, this little rhombus on the back of our character right now that will allow us to deploy drones, which I think is like a really, really cool idea, in fact. And then we've got the flamethrower, we've got the shotgun. As you can see, the laser is mounted off the side of the flamethrower right there. Pretty cool stuff. I actually kind of like the way that by the time you get to the end of the game, you've just got like layers of layers of layers of ordnance on top of your character to take care of some of these enemies out here. Uh, one area where I do think the game could improve, another area, is that the soundtrack. Uh, I, I feel like this game is conducive to kind of like throbbing synth waves, something like noise cream, perturbator, like this is heavy machinery, unleashing heavy carnage on the enemy, you know what I mean? I want some wobba wobbas and like some chunks up in here and some donks. Uh, the game's got a very, very laid back soundtrack that kind of reminds me of like, some of the tracks remind me of Panic on Funkatron from like the Toe Jam and Earl days. Uh, some of the soundtracks are very, very MIDI infused. I feel like it's a little bit low key for the level of carnage that we're throwing out here on screen, and I don't know if it necessarily goes with what we're doing. Uh, we've got ourselves a flamethrower upgrade? Sure, why not? Level 5 flamethrower sounds great to me. And I do think the graphic changes on most of the guns once it gets to like level 5. I have noticed that the flamethrower gets like a lot brighter once you get it up to higher level. What is that right there? Oh, there's things I can pick up. Was that a thing on my previous runs? I don't recall ever seeing things that could be picked up, and I played for like an hour and a half, but then again, I do have a large propensity for tunnel vision, so maybe I'm wrong. Uh, we've got a mech upgrade right here. I'll take the flamethrower upgrade. Yeah, keep making the flamethrower better. If we can get the flamethrower reload down to something like, oh, I don't know, like five seconds or so, I, I feel like we'll be very, very much in a position to be kind of indestructible for... A long run. I don't know if this game has a time limit. As far as I can tell, it doesn't seem to me like we're actually struggling to go out to like 30 minutes or anything else like that, uh, like 20 minutes till dawn or like vampire survivors. It seems like you can just play indefinitely, but I can't say that with any level of conclusivity because I think the farthest I've gotten is about 20 minutes, so I don't know if the game officially ends at any point. Oh, those take up another slot. I thought it would level up. Oh. Okay, so that's actually locking me out of future upgrades. That's a little horrifying. All right. It would be cool. I, I don't know if this exists inside the game. That's why I'm trying to focus on weapons right now is because I'm trying to figure out if this exists. But like in Vampire Survivors, you have the evolution of weapons. In 20 Minutes Till Dawn, you have actual entire skill trees that unlock based on what weapon you take. I'm kind of wondering if something like that exists in this game. Like if I max out a weapon at like level 10 or whatever else, is there going to be like a legendary like set of specialized versions, you know what I mean? Like a flamethrower that focuses all on reload but sacrifices damage, or a flamethrower that focuses all on huge damage and AoE but has like a longer reload time and each one would be kind of like named Diablo style once you get it to that level and you've got to sort of pick a path with where you want to go with your Flammenwerfer deployment. Uh, yeah, let's just continue wiping out enemies kind of in a large circle around me. I can deploy auto turrets. I'm not going to do that, though, because as I say, I, I was trying to focus on, on like, one weapon and see what happens when they get up to, like, level 10 on this playthrough. Because I would like to see if there's kind of, like, any endgame stuff that happens with any of the weapons if you get them to a certain point. Uh, Flamethrower's about to come back up. And we need to push now. There we go. Time for a big push. 
I will continue putting points into Flamethrower. Fun fact, when you level up, it resets the cooldown on whatever weapon you're actively using. So it's a really, really good idea when you're in the middle of a horde like this to level up your Flamethrower because it's going to reset the Flamethrower and allow you to keep going even further. Shotgun or Drone Pod? Let's go with the Shotgun. Take that up to level 7. Anything that allows me to have, like, basically zero downtime as I'm firing forward is something that I support. Reload speed appears to be getting much, much better on the flamethrower, but we still do have, like, a large downtime every X amount of time. We took a little bit of damage right there. One thing I think the game does very, very well is actually letting the player know when they take damage with these horde survival shooters a lot of the time what will end up happening is that damage feedback can be very very wispy towards the player and this happens to me all the time in vampire survivors where like you don't realize you're taking damage until it's too late because there's no like screen shake there's no kind of like real feedback and so anyways i do think that this game lets you know when you're taking damage very 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 well like you absolutely 100 percent know when you're in the danger zone in this game uh we are leveling up like crazy right now we're level 18 and normally at this point, uh, I feel like I'm much, much lower level. So I think the flamethrower is paying off pretty well here. I don't know if I can shotgun my way through this crowd completely. But it doesn't matter because the flamethrower just came back up. Keep upgrading the flamethrower. There we go. We'll take it up to level 8. Very nice. Flamethrower seems to be working out pretty well. I'm fairly happy with this deployment. As I'm looking, I'm not actually sure the weapon upgrades work the way that I described them earlier. Like, I'm looking at them a little bit harder right now, and I don't know. Like, so we have, like, level 4 flamethrower, but it's at, like, level 8 right now. But I know we've leveled it up more than 4 times, so I'm kind of curious how that works. So, like, are the meta upgrades outside the actual internal game... So, like, right here with the shotgun, let's take a look at We've actually got, like, a weird damage thing going on. Alright, so... It looks like it's getting plus 4.2, so maybe it just increases the damage. But you do get the benefits, I feel like, of it. Because, like, the level 1 shotgun un upgraded fires once, and then it reloads. It fires once, it reloads. And, like, when I spawn in with a shotgun now, it definitely fires, like, five times, then reloads as though we had leveled it up previously. And so I'm actually a little bit confused about how that progression totally works. I'm going to have to actually, like, hard stare at the numbers. Uh, we have a few more drops around. I would recommend that we go for those because upgrades in this game are going to be paramount to keeping ourselves rocking. Uh, we got Kavarium. Oh, cool. We actually found metagame currency on the ground. Sweet. Nice. That's actually really, really helpful. The upgrades in this game matter. Like, you will notice your first run ends kind of spectacularly. Uh, your second run will go a lot better because even with a couple thousand credits invested in weapons, especially the ones that, like, a mech specializes in, uh, it increases your survival time. I think my first game with unupgraded weapons, I lasted about 11 minutes. And then my second run, I was up to almost 20 minutes just by focusing on the weapon that the mech that I picked started with. Uh, we got 20 armor points right there. We've got health. We've got armor points at the bottom. I just realized that I forgot to talk about that because I'm shabby at my job. And, you know, I'm all about lowest common denominator. But anyways, armor takes damage first. HP takes damage second. Different mechs specialize in different things. Some of them have way more HP. Some of them have way more armor. It just kind of depends which one you are playing at any given time. I think I will upgrade my laser blaster. So we'll take that up to level 7. Man, that laser blaster is turning into a mean little, like, vector SMG. Although I can't even see the bullets coming out of it due to my flamethrower more or less eating up, like, half the screen. But then again, that's, like, 90% of the fun with games like this. We do have an armor plating kit down here. If we can, I'm going to fight around the armor plating kit. That way I can grab it once I start to take damage. And in fact, I'm just going to pick it up right now because I took a little bit of damage on my way over here. The enemies do have attack animations, which is kind of cool. Like, they don't necessarily just deal damage when they walk into you. Like, these little green guys, they have to do kind of like a headbutt in order to deal damage to you. And I feel like that's a, actually a really, really good little feature right there. Uh, you guys know how I am about damage on touch. And when it comes to horde survival games, I will tolerate damage on touch because it's kind of like a staple of the genre. There we go. Eight second reload time on the old Werfer. Yup. It's a little bit slow right now. Our character is actually really, really ahead of the curve. So I think there's a strong chance we're going to go the distance with this one. I think we're going to be pushing up the ceiling. I 
I like this music right here. This music feels like it's much more in line with what the game is trying to do. It's got kind of like a, you know, an untis untis beat to it. A little bit of that old, uh, you know, boots and pants thing going on. I'm taking damage from this little dude over here, and I would rather not be taking damage from this little dude over here. If we can keep from taking damage for six seconds, though, we naturally regenerate, which I feel like makes this mech really strong. Go ahead and clear out that way. Grab some of these crystals. I do like the feedback sound on the crystals. I feel like it's suitably uh, kind of analog and sounds nice, like an actual pile of coins clinking into one another. I have played a couple of these vampire survivor-like games. Uh, where the feedback from picking up the gems or the XP or whatever you want to call them is very wispy and unsatisfying. Flamethrower level 10. Ooh, the flames turn blue. Okay, yeah, I like that. It's blinding, but it's kind of like a, a satisfactory blinding that makes me happy rather than a blinding that makes me be like, ah, my ocular, my ocular units, they are no longer functioning. Wait for the flamethrower to come back up. See who we can wipe out over here. There we go. Give me all that XP. Give me the good stuff. See if I can kill a few of them, too, while I'm in the neighborhood. It seems like the firing duration of the flamethrower is really going up as we upgrade it as well. I'd love to see, like, paint jobs added to this game for the various mechs, too. Like, you know, you can unlock different colors and, like, subcolors that you can paint them by progression. That's just an easy win for content right there. That's like super easy to implement. You just designate like on the model, you have like alpha and like beta areas, like the major and minor colors, and then you just let the player unlock like a color palette basically. Yup, that'd be pretty sick. I could do that. And then the metallic colors unlock for like really, really far into the game. Yeah, brother, uh, there's level 10 shotgun as well. I don't see too much of a change in the appearance of the shotgun as we hit level 10. The flamethrower, though, is much more obvious, and it's kind of eating up my screen real estate right now, so it's hard to say, but I do like that the graphics change on the weapons as you level them up. That's a really, really nice feature uh, for making the game feel a lot more satisfying. We got a few more of these stony bros over here. Every now and again, they're going to try to push through and mess with us. I'm just going to focus on killing things in the center for right now, and excess DPS can go towards them. Uh, they die on their own once they converge, kind of, like, deep enough in. Oh, they are killable, though. That's nice. Okay, I don't know if I ever had the DPS to kill one before. Luckily, a lot of the little bug mobs seem to be getting stuck behind them. There we go. They're all dead, and now there's just a field of XP to pick up. Drone pod. I want to see what level 10 drone pod looks like. That's my next project. I know we're closer with the laser, but, like, drone pod, bro. This game needs a death ray as well. Like a ray that's just like and like fires off the edge of the screen and then you can swish it around. Something like that. I would also like to see the enemies fragment a little bit more. Uh, if you look at the Rift Breaker, that's kind of what I'm talking about. I really liked how in the Rift Breaker, when you would fire into a horde of monsters, like their arms and their tails and their heads would fly off and there'd be kind of like gore everywhere. A uh, big stomping area. Oh, look at that. We're up against dinosaurs now. We're not fighting bugs anymore. I kind of feel guilty about this because I like dinosaurs a lot more than I like bugs. I don't think there's anything cute about bugs, but like dinosaurs definitely have kind of that cuteness factor going for them. Level 25 at 15 minutes in, and I feel like things are going really, really great for us. I don't think there's really too much to worry about right now. This might be one of the single most effective builds that I've made so far. It just chunks everything that's in front of us. Uh, it wants me to take a new weapon now. Since we're limited with regards to our facing, all three of these weapons are omnidirectional, so I don't think we have to worry about that too much. Siege Cannon gives us AoE randomly all over the place, Chem Tank gives us Area of Denial, and Tesla Coil just gives us straight damage to one enemy. Since we do have a lot of AoE, I'll probably go with the Tesla Coil since that gives us focus damage. It's not going to be leveled up, so it's not going to be very good by comparison to all of our other weapons, but like, don't worry about it, Tesla baby, you'll get there. Edison won't hold you down. I believe in you, Tesla. Keep wiping these guys out. Those little Pinkie Pie bugs down here have got to go, though. They're a little bit faster, and they're crowding me. They're making me feel nervous about my screen real estate. And here in the world of mech combat, we have, we have respect for property rights, okay? Let's go ahead and wipe these guys out. 
trying to get the most bang for my buck out of the flamethrower whenever it comes up. This is about the point where I died last time I played the game. Uh, so we are officially on progression within the next 30 seconds or so anyways. Uh, we'll just do a quick little, yeah, just do a little turn on the catwalk, ooh, on the catwalk right there to get rid of some of these enemies. We do have a number of items on screen, but they're all healing items, and we don't really need them since we're playing the robot that's blessed with ridiculous amounts of, of just kind of... Our robot is blessed with ridiculous amounts of DACA and regeneration, and those two things in collaboration with one another are making it so we're actually quite difficult to kill. At some point, I figure they'll probably throw the kitchen sink at me, and we'll hit that next progression wall where you need to buy more upgrades, but I don't feel like we're there yet. Another level up here, probably go with the laser blaster, see if we can get that up to level 10, and kind of see what happens with it. I believe that level 10 may actually be the max, because I've noticed we haven't seen any shotgun or flamethrower upgrades come through ever since we hit level 10 with them. But that is something that I would like to see is once you hit a level like once you hit a weapon to level 10 it'd be really really cool if the next level up basically it was like what do you want to do you know you can get this named flamethrower that has a huge area that it does you can get this named flamethrower that keeps the same area and has a really long reload time but does like devastating damage or you can go for this flamethrower over here which sacrifices a little bit of damage sacrifices a little bit of area but has a hundred percent uptime and never has to reload like interesting choices like that as a reward for being at the end of a tree i think are, are really really i think stimulating gameplay choices for players especially if all three of those choices come with their own distinct graphic but then again there's also the possibility here that i may be expecting an awful lot from a two dollar game and that's almost entirely that's almost entirely vampire survivor's fault but still it has set my expectations for sort of like how the gameplay emerges like really really high with regards to like secrets and the amount of stuff to unlock and the amount of stuff you can play around with maybe that's just me looks like we've got new enemy sets coming on in oh yeah the little rock guys are trying to get us right now okay We'll just keep clearing various other directions then, since that way seems to be somewhat impassable. But as you can see, this game escalates, I think, a little bit slower than a lot of the other horde shooters out there. Like, it doesn't necessarily take its time, but to get up to, like, true mayhem takes a little bit with this game. I guess I'll take the chem tank. I have not had a lot of luck with the chem tank in the past, but then again, I've never really focused on the chem tank which may also be kind of its own problem. Uh, drone pod is at level five, laser's at level eight. Let's see if we can take laser up to level 10 first. See where we can get that to. That being said, I do enjoy these target rich environments as just like free level up opportunities when I've got a nice build going. Almost at level 32. They gave us auto turret deployments, but I'm gonna focus on chem tank for a minute. Just make my little fart clouds, my little diesel fumes a little bit better. Oh, there's like big guys over there. Oh, and they're fast too. They're like murlocs or something. I don't know what they are. Uh, we are not fast enough to outrun these guys. I now regret all of my decisions to not take any movement speed increases. Uh, yeah, restore my HP real quick with this one. So we need to focus on these little murlocs over here before this whole thing turns into murlocalypse now. Um, so if we see a murloc, it's got to die first while our flamethrower has uptime. So target selection, I think, is going to be key here. There's laser blaster level 10. If I could get out of here... Oh, man, they almost got me right there. I'm at half health. Uh, restore some armor plating. Actually, upgrade the Tesla coil. I, I still am a firm believer that in games like this, DPS is king. And if you keep doubling down into DPS, you will eventually survive. Uh, there's Drone Pod. Which, I'll admit, Drone Pod seems a little bit underwhelming in retrospect. But I need to work my way down to this armor repair, and I need to work my way down to this health. Otherwise, we're not going to last much longer. It seems like things have definitely hit sort of an inflection point with regards to the escalation of the game. And so I need, like, a hard reset right now. We do have a few turrets that are firing out the back of the vehicle. So we're, we're, we're chipping one or two off the... Oh, God, more murlocs. Dude, they're so fast. Uh, give me the armor. Give me the armor. Give me the armor. 
Oh, dude, they're all getting damage off. They hurt so much. Uh, give me, give me HP. I just gotta stay in the fight. Floor chicken. No! We're dead. Okay. Some movement speed increases. That's gonna be an important thing. By the t the post 20 minute period, we need to get some movement speed increases. Okay. I may have doubled down a little bit too hard into extra damage. But after this, it's going to tell you what you've unlocked. You unlock musical tracks. You unlock mechs. Uh, if you don't want to wait for a mech, you can unlock it with the currency that you're getting from every run. Uh, you will unlock kind of, you know. But that's really, like, between the mechs and the soundtracks and the levels, That's I think that's an easy win. Is Like, that's the big thing that, like, I would put in is allow them to customize the color of the mech and then just drip drop different colors that you can use for majors and minors as they're playing the game and then, like, just use that as a bonus. And then once you get to, like, a certain level of progression, you know, that's when you start getting, like, the metallic or, like, the gold or, like, the reflective paint jobs and things. And, like, the actual integrated, like, camo ones with digital and floor and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, this is Project Lazarus. Uh, it's a cool little addition to the Horde survival genre. I don't really have that many problems with it. I have suggestions, but I don't really have problems. Uh, we did keep in mind, I know some people are going to be like, this looks really stiff and janky. We picked a really stiff mech that I had never played before for our first run. This guy with the rotating treads, much more fluid. This guy right here that can move in any direction with arcade controls on WAST instantly while rotating the top of his chassis, also much more fluid. So if your takeaway here was like, this game looks really, really stiff, that's not a function of the game, that's a function of the tombstone mech that I was trying out for the first time. So just keep that in mind. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today we had a little $2 wonder that I think is definitely going to eat up some of my time because I like the idea of mechs way better than I like the idea of vampire hunters. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in and thank you for the luxury of your time. Hopefully this video was helpful and I will catch you all tomorrow. Bye.